The year 2015 marks the end of the production of the Land Rover Defender. What preceded was 67 years of vehicles which in their own right changed the world and forever changed the way people moved. It all started in the 1940s with a drawing on the beach. The vision of one man that would translate not only into automotive greatness, but also as one of the most iconic designs in history. For those who are not Land Rover enthusiasts as such, it is hard if not impossible to understand why we, the owners, drivers and enthusiasts, feel the way we do about these machines. To try and aid understanding, a short trip is probably in order. It's about the places, the people and the journey. Not unlike other iconic four-wheel drives, people who use them to reach the places so many don't have the chance to experience have a connection, a certain gratitude towards their vehicles for getting them there. However, and too many before have admitted this, and therefore it cannot be ignored, the fact that Land Rovers are special creatures. Perhaps their owners too. Which means that when the inevitable happens, there isn't knowing that all will, or rather should, be well. Or perhaps not so well. The fact of the matter is, when you take a dog for a walk without a leash, it is bound to take its own route. In this case, to nowhere. The difference is, when a Defender 90 plants itself in a muddy ditch, up to its diffs, you don't have to call around to ask if anyone's seen it. You know it'll be there, for quite some time. eventually did come loose. However, only after the matter of not being pulled out by Toyota, it cost several hours, a small hatchback and a local farmer's afternoon. Obviously, it's all just part of the adventure. To get back to the sentimentality we have about these vehicles, I've come to Bathurst to meet up with an old friend, a 70 Series 3 Shorty. When we first encountered, it was a mix of white and rust. Years later, it's now purple and rust, and spends its day on a farm in the pristine Eastern Cape bush. From what I know, this vehicle has been used as a beach car, a runaround, a tow car, a student's first wheels, and now a farm labourer. After 40 years, I expected it to snap in half the moment we moved it out of the shed. But no. A drop of fuel, a turn of the key, and it sends the motor splattering into life first time. Weren't expecting that now, were you, Mr. Land Cruiser? Obviously, none of the dials work. Everything feels like it's about to fall off or apart, and yet it takes on the bush without hassle. With miles of blue sky and bush above and beyond, 
You forget that the ride is liquidizing your kidneys, that the steering is making your arms ache, and that the clutch is building your left leg into a disproportional size. It doesn't matter. You're in a landy in Africa, and something seems quite right about that. The scary thing is that this was the most refined of the series Land Rovers. The Series 3s appeared in the late 1970s and followed up the Series 1 and 2 models. All in all, the Series Land Rovers, mere upgrades of Morris Wilkes 1947 design, spanned a period of 40 years until the Land Rover Defender appeared in the late 80s. A near indestructible ladder frame chassis with solid axles on industrial leaf springs meant that the driver would give up due to lumbar injury before the valley or mountain got the better of the Land Rover. And everyone bought into this. Militaries, health services, police, firemen, farmers, conservationists, explorers, even royals and pen pushers. I hear the Toyota boys in the background. Yes, but that's a lot of oil on a lot of driveways. Sure. I think there are only rare cases where veteran landy owners have not been let down at some point due to mechanical issues. However, easy fixes they must have been, seeing as 70% of all landies are still on the road. The other 30% are next to the road, waiting for a tow truck. Apparently. Arguably the greatest overlanding vehicle ever. The Defender's days are now numbered. Production stops officially at the end of 2015. The winds of nanny society, of urbanizing, of creature comforts, of safety regulations and emissions control will be to blame. No matter how much crap they gave us, no matter the spinal injuries, the leaking cabins, the deafening rattles and hours under the bonnet in the African sun, all there is left to say from the boys and girls who have had the privilege of having landies in their lives is thank you, old friend. Here's to another 70 years of Land Rover. Then, now, and always, the best 4x4 by far.